Hi, so we're going to look at this problem today, which is constructing a DFA for the language of strings that have a certain number of A's followed by a certain number of B's, where the number of A's plus the number of B's is even. And the goal of this problem is to construct a deterministic finite automaton for this language. So how would we actually do it? So notice here, whenever you are looking at a problem and you're not sure what to do, look at what the condition is actually saying. So here it's saying the number of A's plus the number of B's is an even number. Well, that kind of restricts what M and N could be here because if M and N sum to an odd number, then that corresponding string is not in this language. So this actually gives us two possibilities, one of which is that M is even and N is also even. And the other case is M is odd, but that implies that N is also odd. Okay, well, we could make a DFA for the first one, a DFA for the second one, and we want all the strings such that they're in camp one or in camp two, but this is actually way too much work. We can approach this more directly. So when you're focused on problems like this, where there's no condition like something and something else, always try to approach it directly, and this is no exception. So notice something interesting about this language. There's a certain format of the strings that the A's have to come first and then the B's have to come second. So because the A's have to come first, well, we have the cases of where M is even and odd to work with. So let's start making the DFA then. Well, of course, there's always has, there always has to be a start state no matter what the DFA is. So let's just call the start state Q0. And if we want to consider the case of where M is even, then we can build a simple two-state machine for it, namely this one. Because if we have an even number of A's, we'll end up back at Q0. If we have an odd number of A's, we'll end up at Q1. And this will actually be really helpful for us. So consider the case of where we have an even number of A's, which means we end up back at Q0. So what do we do? Well, we're in this camp right now, which means we gotta accept the strings exactly when we have an even number of B's. Well, it could be zero B's, or it could be two B's, or four B's, or six B's. So we can just do a simple construction on this existing DFA like this. So consider any string of this form. So what does that tell us? Well, that means that if M is even and N is even, well, let's see what happens. Well, we have a certain number of A's and a certain number of B's. Well, in order to get to Q0, we have to have an even number of A's. And then if we have an even number of B's, we end up at Q0. But there's one problem. So if we look at this DFA, we see that it accepts A, A, B, B, A, A. Because if we have two A's, we end up back at Q0. Two B's gets us back to Q0. Two A's, again, ends up at Q0. So that means it's not of the form of the strings that we want. <laughs> so what can we do about that? It's something to notice here. So notice here. So suppose that there are zero Bs, that there are no Bs in the string, which means that the string is all As. Well, that means that our simple two-state machine from before is sufficient. But suppose that there are two Bs. Well, that means that we need to 
not come back to Q0, because if we come back to Q0, then we can have this behavior of A's being read after B's. So my suggestion here is to go to another set of two states, like this. Okay, and this actually enforces, I know it's not a DFA yet, this enforces that we have an even number of Bs, because think about it, if we have two Bs here, well, we, after we do the A part, we have two Bs and that gets us to Q3. If we have any odd number, either we're at Q2 or we're at Q4, neither of which is a final state. And so if we have an even number, we have two that come here and any two afterward are gonna end up back at Q3 and so it's accepted. It's not a DFA of course, because there's no transition currently on A from any one of these states. But that tells us because we're reading a B on this transition, that means if we read another A, then it's not of the form that we want in the language for the strings. So in fact, we can make a dead state for these. I'm gonna call it D, that loops on everything, A and B, and transitions from each of these three states on A. So if we're in one, any one of these three bottom states and we see an A, then we should never accept the string, which means we go to D. Cool. So now let's, so we handle this case. Now let's handle the other case of whether, uh, when M is odd and N is odd. So that means we're in Q1 right now after reading an odd number of A's then we have to read an odd number of Bs. So one thing to keep in mind is, if we have an odd number of Bs, that means we have at least one B. So we can do a similar trick that we did down here, but over here. So instead of two Bs to get to a two state uh, little machine to compute an even number of Bs, we're gonna do something different. We're going to have one B to a state called Q5. And here we're going to, I, uh, we're going to oscillate between two states uh, with Bs. And when is an odd number of Bs? Well, let's see. So in Q1, we have zero Bs so far. Q5, we have one B. And every two more, we're going to get an odd number of Bs. So one plus an even number is, of course, odd. So that means that in Q5, we should accept. And like before, like these states down here, we need to have transitions on A that go to a dead state because we wanna have a string that's not in this language to be not accepted. So from Q5, we're going to have a transition on A, and from Q6, a transition on A2. And that completes this DFA.